Welcome back to the Home Lab and I've got another interesting video for you today. What we're going to look at is the rather unusual device that resides inside these brown asthma preventer inhalers. Just before we start, I want to say a huge thank you again to all of you for supporting my channel and for leaving some absolutely fantastic comments, which I really enjoy and I always like to reply to them if I can. I also want to say a huge thank you too to PCBWay for sponsoring this video again and just letting me do what I want to do. I don't feel constrained at all by the sponsorship, which is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, as you know, they make bespoke printed circuit boards and they have an absolutely fantastic website with loads of ideas for projects as well. So why don't you have a look at that and you too might get an idea for what you'd like to do next. Whilst we're not sure whether Barry actually has asthma, uh, he's been on one of these brown inhalers for quite a while that prevents him getting the symptoms which he has shown from time to time. And it's a really interesting device because on the back of it, those of you who use these might have noticed there's a little counter that tells you how many puffs you've had and it stops at zero when it thinks the container is empty. Now, I was disappointed to see the other day that when he went for a new prescription, he got the same chemical formula with the same dosage, but it came in a different coloured inhaler and it no longer has that little counter on the back. Now, I don't know whether they're doing away uh, with these brown ones, but even if they're not, I'd like you to see how this counter works because it's a very clever little system built into the bottom of these and it uses a really interesting arrangement of gears. So the first thing we've got to do if we're going to understand uh, how these inhaler counters work is we need to remove the inhaler from the brown case. So uh, we'll just take it apart and take the canister out. And deep inside there, you might see that white bit is the bit that picks up uh, the tip of the canister to give you one single puff, but also it contains the counter mechanism. And so it's white, but the counter wheel is actually black. So to get that out, um, I've got to get a screwdriver in here and just flick a couple of tabs inside that will release the mechanism and then it will come out this way. Right, let's see if we can unclick this. So there's a tab there, and it's tricky, and a tab here. Do you remember as a kid taking things apart, electrical things, etc.? And it's a really good way um, to understand how they work. There we go, that's released it, and it's now loose in here, and the tricky bit is getting it out. And what I often do is try and use um, a pair of tweezers to sort of prise it out. It's coming and a bit more percussive maintenance and it's it sort of tends to do I forgot what that syndrome is called but uh, the stuck drawer syndrome where it gets a slight twist on it and then it gets stuck inside so we'll give it another tap there we go that's probably doing the uh, sound no good at all and we're almost there Can we prise it with the screwdriver a little bit? There we go. And that's the mechanism out. So what we need to do now is take this apart and see how it actually works. So now we've got the little counter mechanism out. Let's try and take this apart. And again, this one has a couple of little tangs on it. Um, so you have to kind of prise the mechanism out of it. And that's one clicking away let's try again and I think in fact that's done it so now what we've got to do is just take these parts out one at a time and I'll show you what each one does so the first bit to come out is these white parts and it's actually two bits I'll take the top one off there it is and there's another one underneath it so those two key together um, and I'll explain what they do in a minute and then if you look closely, there's a really interesting little gear sort of ratchet system here. And that's the bit that helps the uh, counter itself rotate. So we'll take that out. And then underneath that, there's a spring. 
and even though this spring um, looks like it's part of the ratchet mechanism it's not in fact it's just a compression spring uh, that can freely rotate and that sits inside this piece here that black piece and then the clever bit of working um, is all in here and in fact we've got three gears or you could say two gears really uh, we've got a gear here that rotates and that goes onto a worm drive that then rotates this black gear which is actually the counter mechanism so we'll have a closer look at that now so before this goes all flying all over the lab as I take it apart let's have a slightly closer look at what's going on inside so the counter wheel has got teeth on it and you can see the individual teeth here and uh, then that's driven by a worm drive that itself is driven by this little gear here and I think if I rotate it that way can you actually see the black wheel turning now this is the key to actually winding the thing back because if you've had all the puffs that it thinks it can give you what happens is the worm drive gets stuck there we go it won't turn anymore and on the opposite side of the black gear is a little tab and that tab catches on another piece of plastic on this case and stops it from rotating any further so you can't actually go past zero and back to where you started and think you've got a full can so now let's take the gears out from inside here and you'll see here's a little white gear that's directly connected to a worm drive and that worm drive drives the black counter wheel around and it sits on its own you can't really see it because it's a bit transparent but it sits on its own uh, shaft there now the other thing you'll notice is that uh, the counter wheel as we rotate it there it is it gets jammed we'll go the other way because i'm not sure if i'm going the right way but it doesn't make any difference and then when you go through a full rotation it jams and that's the little tab on the black wheel that catches onto this case to stop you going past zero and back to a high number to make you think you've got a full canister loaded and if I turn it over it's almost impossible to see but I might be able to take it out uh, that's actually the little tab that catches onto an extra little bit of plastic that sticks out on the black wheel and there we go causes it to sort of jam or in this case start at one number and finish at zero and not go around any further so should we see if we can get the uh, counter wheel out now and that's sort of easier said than done because it's sort of sitting under that bit there and I'm not sure I can get it to click out but we'll give it a go very fiddly oh there we go so that's come out and so you can see the numbers on the counter wheel but again the important bit is this little tab here um, I'm sorry I can't get any closer I haven't quite got the right uh, photography equipment for that but there's a little uh, tab there and that catches on uh, the case actually around here there's a bit that uh, that sticks out I'm sort of catching it there with my tweezers and that stops this going past its zero point so let's do something really rather strange and it's the opposite of what you do as a kid when you learn how things work um, to explain how this works it's actually easier to do it by putting the whole thing back together so uh, there's the counter wheel and I've got to get it to click into place and I think it has uh, then I've got to put the little worm drive uh, in place and remember that has its own shaft and I can see this going onto the floor uh, let's see if I can drop it in there it is okay so you're now aware that to turn the dial that does the counting you need to connect to this little gear here and rotate that and that will rotate the worm drive that drives the counter wheel but how do we rotate this little gear so I'll show you how that works now so if you remember the next piece that came out was this mounted that way but if I turn it over can you see gear teeth here and those gear teeth they don't have a stop on them they don't need to but those gear teeth mesh with this little one here on the top of the worm drive so every time we puff uh, we've got to cause this black disc to rotate so let's put that back in and um, it's spring so that sits in there and we've got to make sure that it meshes with the gear below and then we've got the spring and the spring is only really to give it a little bit of um, feel as it were 
and to uh, make sure that I, I guess that you're not holding the uh, the actual can in for for too long when you're having a puff from the inhaler. And then the next bit that goes on top of that has little sort of ratchety gears on it. Now you might think, OK, so that goes down there and turns the spring. No, the spring is literally just a spring. So the ratchet gears have to actually go in from above. And you can tell I've never made watches before. But there we go. So um, that's in now. So we're at the stage where if we can rotate this ratchety gear here um, by pressing down on it and pushing it around, a uh, partial part of a turn that will then turn the black ring and the black ring's got a gear on it that'll turn the little white gear and the little white gear will turn the worm drive and the worm drive will turn the counter so now all we've got to do is explain how do we ratchet this forwards um, as you press down how do we ratchet this so it actually rotates try my best here it rotates uh, the oh, it's popped out the black gear below let me try it with my fingers there we go. <laughs> Trying to be gentle with uh, the tweezers. And in fact, you can show the rotation better with your hands. So we're almost there. These were the other two bits that came out. And if you remember, they slot together like that. There we go. And the key to it all is underneath all of this. Um, now, they tend to fall apart. So if I can sort of hold them together, uh, I don't know if you can see, it's very difficult to see, but there are little sort of triangular shaped bits that stick out here. And the clever thing about those are that when we press down on this inside the inhaler, and that's done by the canister, I'm sure this is not going to be in focus, but the canister pressing it in, then those little triangular bits that are on the back of here, and they're made up of the inner and outer ring, ratchet forwards this little ratchet here and that's the key to how the whole thing turns so let's see if i can put it all now back together so interestingly enough uh, this has to go in exactly the right way because these two tabs here are further apart than those and i think if i've got it right it's there and this must all be put together by a machine in the factory it's really clever so there we go that's that one all sorted and so when you actually take a puff on the inhaler, you can see what happens. This presses in there and you can almost hear it. It causes this top two um, disc system to push down to ratchet that black ring forwards. And then you've seen the rest of the mechanism there that then turns that little white gear. The white gear turns uh, the worm drive and the worm drive turns the counter on the front. Just before we finish, um, this mechanism, as you can see, is driven by the can, the rim of the can, but that in no way affects the actual medication coming out. Uh, to get the medication out, you obviously need the case, and inside the case, um, there's a little bit that sticks out, and uh, the can goes into that, and when you press, that's what causes the aerosol to actually release the medication. So this is hollow, so this is only controlled by the outer rim of the case, but it doesn't affect the nozzle at all. So I think you'll agree that's a really neat little mechanism. So let's put it all back together again. And the designers have even thought about that with little rails that this runs down to make sure it goes inside effectively. And let's push it in, back of the screwdriver maybe. There you go. And it actually clicked into place. In goes the canister. There we go. And we'll put the lid back on. And we've actually reset that one to about uh, 50 puffs. So now we know how these brown inhaler counters work. It did occur to me that there's something that we can do if you get one of these type of inhalers. Now, before I tell you, I am not a medical expert and I strongly recommend you don't do this because I don't really know what I'm talking about from the medical side, but I do know from the mechanical side that if you've got one of these inhalers and an empty old brown one, if you were to swap the cartridges in them, the counter's still not going to work because you know it goes to zero and then gets stuck. 
But if you were to take the counter out, reset it back to its highest number, put it back in and swap the cartridges, get rid of the old one and put a new one in, maybe then you'll have an inhaler that works perfectly well with its counter reset. Again, I'm not recommending that you do that, but from a mechanical and physics point of view, I think that's quite an interesting thought. So I do hope you enjoyed that video on this wonderful little mechanical device that sits at the bottom of the brown inhaler package. I wonder how many of you have used these and never really thought about how this works. It's a very clever little device. Uh, if you have, and uh, maybe you have thought about it, leave a comment anyway. I always find your comments really interesting. Whatever, as you know, I'll be making another video very soon and do please join me then. Thank you.